Hi everybody and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you're new, I'm Corey. Welcome to my channel. If you are returning, thank you so much for being here. You know how much I appreciate you. Today is Minnie's Challenge. It's so exciting. There's a whole playlist I will tell you about a little bit more later, but let's go ahead and get right on into the crafting. DIY number one. For this project, I have tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree, this little Dollar Tree bird feeder that I am pulling the little um, ticket off of, ticket, sticker, whatever, <laughs> tag. And I have my celery chalk paint by Waverly. I had used a little piece of sandpaper to get that cleaned up on the edges a little bit. And now I'm gonna use my Gorilla wood glue to put six of my little tumbling tower blocks together. I just fashioned them into a little riser that I'm gonna be using a little later on my birdhouse. So I am going to give everything but the roof and that little perch a coat of the um, celery chalk paint. I'm leaving a little space at the bottom there for my wood glue to adhere. So then I'm gonna paint my little perch white and I'll leave that one end completely um, blank because again, I'm gonna be applying glue to the surface and you want that to be wood to wood really for the best bond. But then I painted the rest of it white. And now I'm coming in with the roof. I am doing that white as well and getting that all touched up. And I'll do the little perch in white as well. So just taking my time and being careful not to hit my green with white. And then I'll go ahead and um, adhere my perch. I'm using a pretty good amount of the wood glue so you can see why I left that little place unpainted on the bottom of the birdhouse and now I have this little Dollar Tree birdie I thought it was so cute and I wanted to put it on the perch at first but then I wasn't liking the way that it looked so I went ahead and attached the bird um, to the little bottom ledge of the house and now I have these paper flowers from Michaels I had picked these up quite some time ago they've been in my stash I've used them for other things but I thought that they were so pretty and I thought it just would give this a little bit of something extra I had been looking for some miniature flowers in my stash that I could use on little picks things of that nature but I didn't really have anything that was going to be small enough um, and the style that I was looking for. So these actually came in super handy because I thought that they were so sweet as if they were just kind of growing up the side of the little birdhouse. I went ahead and attached a couple more to the little roof line and you could do as few or as many of these as you want. I mean, this is where your imagination can take you wherever you'd like to go. You could use pit berries, you could use greenery, but this is my little birdhouse. Let me know what you think. today is part of the minis challenge i know that i mentioned that a little bit earlier there is a whole playlist full of inspiration there's a link in my description box i hope you'll check it all out and if you have interest in joining us the next month it'll be spring and easter as a theme on march 18th diy number two for this project, I had these leftover skewer pieces from a mirror project that I had done um, recently. It was a starburst mirror, and these were just some scraps that I had left over. So I'm cutting the, a couple of these down to size. I want to make sure that they are the same length. And then I'm going to cut down a bunch of other smaller pieces, again, wanting to make sure that those are all the same size. I believe I cut five of these for my little rungs and once I had these all cut I was going to go ahead and start placing them in between my two little uprights 
and I'm just checking to make sure that everything is the same length here and trimming things off as necessary. These are my little um, dog toenail clippers. One of my subscribers had suggested that and they actually work really well with the skewers and, um, and little wooden dowels. So now I am going to go ahead and place my little rungs for the ladder that we are building. Gonna just do a little mini ladder. And then I'm going to use my Gorilla wood glue again for this project. Now I was hopeful that it would be tacky enough that it would hold everything together and I wouldn't have to worry about you know, using hot glue. Um, unfortunately, every time I tried to let go of the little uprights, they would like move or roll away slightly they just it wasn't sufficient so I did end up using a little bit of hot glue to tack the corners there I did that at the bottom and then I did it again at the top so I used my wood glue and then I came in with some um, hot glue just to hold it I did end up removing the hot glue later um, just used my heat gun to heat it up once the wood glue was dry and then I was able to just peel the hot glue away so you didn't see that little blob of glue because the wood glue will dry clear so i just went ahead and added in my other dowels once i had the top and bottoms uh dowels secured or rungs secured with the hot glue i didn't need to worry about the middle because my uprights weren't going to be going anywhere hopefully that makes sense but i did go ahead and just add in a little extra glue because my cuts weren't perfect and i wanted to make sure everything was secure so now i had this um pick from amazon it's a boxwood pick but then that little uh metal circle that was a part of a dollar tree paper towel holder that I had taken apart and so that was a leftover little ring and I am using my hot glue putting a pretty good sized little blob on the metal and then attaching my little greenery stems and I just continue to do that working my way all the way around lifting it up where I needed to to get down underneath and just making sure that uh, my little wreath was nice and full. And then I took some Dollar Tree ribbon and I am creating a loop and trying to figure out how I'm going to attach this because this is going to be going on our little ladder. So I went ahead and cut that off. I was trying to figure out how I wanted to attach this to the ladder. So this is my thinking mode right now and think, think, think. And then I finally went ahead and tied a knot in the top of this. And then I trimmed off that little excess once I had that knot nice and tight. Flipped that over just to make sure that I had a nice clean edge. Used some hot glue on that to seal that in like that. And then I went ahead and I grabbed some more ribbon and created a little bow loop, like a loop bow. So I kind of tucked the ends under. I wanted to make sure that um, I didn't have any frayed edges sticking out. So this is kind of a, a weird way of doing it, but hopefully you can tell how I was creating that seam. You could also just lay it flat, um, glue it together, and then flip it right side out. And then you would have the same kind of uh, seam if you will but then I took another little piece of ribbon and I am going to wrap this around the middle of my bow I'm obviously using hot glue for this as well just wrapping that around so that I create a little faux bow and then I'll trim that off as well and I'm going to tuck the end in underneath because again you know I like to have my clean edges and just use a little bit of glue on there once that was all set, I fluffed up my little loops for my bow because I wanted them to be a little fluffy, not just flat. And I attached that to the little knot that I had created at the top or the end, excuse me, of, of my loop. Once I had that all set, I then grabbed my little ladder. Once it was completely dry, I did let it dry overnight. And then I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to attach this to the ladder. So I, I undid the little loopy thing and I ended up tucking it in and attaching it in that regard, just kind of looping it through. 
And here it is all done. Let me know what you think. DIY number three. All right, I went into my stash and pulled out all of my little wooden beads. I've gotten all of these from Amazon at one time or another, and I'm pulling out different sizes. I believe I had, I think it was seven different sizes, but I used eight beads um, times three three so I'm pulling out threes and I, I was debating as to whether two of them were the same size or not but you can see I'm kind of um, stacking them here in size order and uh, just lining them up and making sure that I've got what I need but it was ultimately eight for each of these and then I'm painting them all orange this was originally pumpkin chalk paint, but I had added some white Adirondack to it um, in a recent video because I wanted a lighter color of orange. So this is actually a, a mixture custom blend <laughs> paint. And I'm just using the end of one of my little skewers to help me here. I've tried a bunch of different methods with, um, with painting beads and I just found that this was going to be easiest for me today so once those were all completely dry I grabbed out some scrap twine that I had in my stash and I threaded it onto a needle and I'm just gonna go ahead and thread all of those little beads onto my twine now the first time that I did this I'm making three of these the first time I did it I had doubled up the twine thinking that that was the way I needed to to have it for this forgetting that I didn't want to cut the loop at the top I didn't I wanted that to um, remain a solid loop so here I got to that part and I'm like well that was a silly quarry so now I have to um, take it back through and it was a little bit challenging because I had a double width of um, double width double my twine was doubled up and so it was thicker trying to go back through those holes because then all of a sudden it was four pieces of twine trying to go through those holes I managed um, and I'll show you in a minute what I did for the second and third one to make my life a little bit easier but you can see I've got the loop at the top and then I have the little trailing I'll call them um, um, oh my goodness <laughs> what are those things roots little roots you know sometimes carrots have little roots coming off the end I do trim those up a little bit but for now I'm taking these little grass pieces I'm trimming them down and I'm gonna use some of these um, for my little carrot top and please forgive me because I keep yawning while I'm doing this it's late at night I was running a little bit behind this week with doing my video and so it is way past my bedtime tonight and my body is yelling at me <laughs> so sorry about that if I sound like I'm suppressing yawns but um, I went ahead and tucked the grass through the loop folded it in half and then I'll pull the little um, and that's probably why I lose my words too because my, my brain is like shut off the little roots those yes I pulled those down see I'm trimming them off um, I had tied a knot in the very bottom um, of the base of my little carrot uh, just so that everything was nice and secure and now I've looped over a whole bunch of pieces of twine and I'm gonna tie that around the top of my carrot at the base of the greenery So once I had that tied around, I went ahead and created a little bow. So we've just got that sweet little thing. And then I did go ahead and tie an extra knot at the base. I just wanted to make sure that my knot was large enough that it wasn't going to slip up through. And I also want to make sure everything was nice and tight. So now for the second and third carrots, I strung these on the same way, but you can see I'm only using a single layer of twine this time. And that worked out much better so once I had my little um, carrot beads on there I went ahead and strung it back through and I was just taking care to make sure that I had that loop and I almost lost it there for a second but 
um, I wanted to make sure I kept that loop at the top so I did go ahead and tuck my greenery through there and that was just gonna help me um, prevent it from slipping back out if I've tugged a little bit too much on the twine I didn't want it to come out of that top bead so you can see that that's in there and then I just went back through each of the um, what are those beads <laughs> to get down to the bottom oh my goodness I'm so sorry you guys I really have uh, got to go to bed soon here but I got these all on here and then I went ahead and did the same things that I did on the first one. So I tied a knot in the bottom, made sure that that was nice and secure. And then I also tied a bow with multiple strands of twine up at the top. Now I left my little loops um, loopy. I did not cut the, the little loops open on um, my bows, but you could certainly cut your loops if you choose. So I've got two little carrots with roots, one without, but let me know what you think. And now it's time for a shout out timeout beautiful rose I love these I have one of these little wheel things I've been trying to figure out what to do with but cute Valerie these sweet little Easter projects and nice Iona Iona has been busy everything looks so pretty I would love to give you a shout out as well if you have interest to please send me an email at craftedbycory at gmail.com DIY number four all right, these are little coffee cups from the Dollar Tree. They came in a pack of four. And when I saw these, they looked like little mini pitchers to me. So I thought, well, maybe I could try to figure out a way to mold the plastic. This is not the way to do it. <laughs> this is a soldering iron, and it wanted to just cut right through the plastic and not just melt it and make it malleable. So I went to plan B and I cut a little V out of the top of my little pitcher. And once I had that V all cut, this works actually quite well. You just want to make sure you're real careful if you do this. Um, but I got that little triangle cut out. And then I grabbed some of my parchment paper and cut out a little piece. It was a folded over piece, right? So now I'm opening it up and I'm trying to figure out how to get the shape for my little pitcher spout. So I went ahead and cut that down and got it to the shape that I wanted it. Once that was done, I used that as a pattern. So I grabbed some cardstock out of my stash. The cardstock was in a pack from Dollar Tree bunch of little scraps of cardstock traced my pattern on there I went ahead and cut that out you can see I had put a little notch at the bottom there to help it bend and take the shape that I wanted it to so that I formed it back inside my little pitcher base if you will and then I used some scotch tape to just hold it down in place so that I could um, find a way to secure it permanently so you can see it's starting to come together. Once I had that ready, I'm using my hot glue. I went over the seams first, and then I decided I was actually going to cover the entire outer spout to just give it the same. Um, I didn't want there, it to look like there were a whole bunch of seams on it, right? So I wanted it to have a smoother appearance. So once I had the seams done, I did go back in and I just filled in that entire surface of the spout and it just kind of made it a little bit more cohesive. I did use a little bit of parchment paper to help smooth it in a couple of places. The one thing I like about, or one of the things that I like about the parchment paper is that the hot glue doesn't stick to it. So that was handy. So once I had that formed the way I wanted it, I let it cool for a few, and then I painted it with my pool chalk paint by Waverly. I gave it a good coat on in, um, outside and inside, and then for my second coat, I just came in and I was tapping the paint all over the outer surface. So 
let it dry overnight and here's my little pitcher i've got some glass beads i've got my floral foam i've got some flowers those are from walmart and i have my butterflies from michael's that i've had in my stash for a while i'm just cutting down my floral foam i honestly in hindsight was wishing that i had only used that one little piece in the bottom um, I, it wasn't necessary for me to stack this um, it, it would have I would have preferred to have my flowers sit a little bit lower. I, I made it work. I made it work. I made it work. But it would have been easier had I not added that extra piece of foam. But now I'm tucking these glass beads down in and I'm pushing them down as far as I can because I want them to um, help keep the pitcher from being tippy, right? So I want those beads as far down in the base as I can get them. So now I'm taking my little picks apart. Um, if you've followed me for any amount of time, you know that this is my MO. I cut everything apart and then I put it back together again the way that I want it. So I started around the outer edge with these little flowers. I don't know, is this considered baby's breath? What would you consider this to be? I don't even really know, but, um, but it's very delicate little white flowers and kind of bushy so just creating my little arrangement here with all of this and worked from the outer edges in towards the middle once I had that all set I came in with my little butterflies these are great because they have little wires in them so that they can be shaped a little bit and I just went ahead and I applied three of those to my little butterfly bush but I think this is adorable. Let me know what you think. DIY number five. All right, for this project, I have a little, um, what is this? A little crate from the Dollar Tree. I sanded it off, getting the rough edges off. Um, and now I've got my Sunny Porch by Home Decor chalk paint. I painted the top of it and then that first little rung. So wanted to make sure that that was all nice and just on that rung because you probably figured out we're going to make a little book stack with this. What I did this time, um, I went ahead and used a fine brush and I created the illusion of the book on the other sides as well. So we've got the spine and then we've got, you know, the, the cover that would come down along the edges, right? So that's what I did with this. And once I had the yellow applied for that next layer, I was going to do my vintage Victorian. It's this light pink color. I did the same thing with that and created my little um, book, the cover for my books, my hardcover, and then I used lilac for the third one. And I did the same thing with the lilac on the edges and made the illusion that it was an actual book with the cover. Um, and these are just stacked up here. So I did that on all sides. And then once I had that done, I actually had made a mistake with my yellow. So to fix that, I could have left the, the pages, so to speak, that natural wood tone, but because I needed to fix my yellow, oops, I decided to come in with oatmeal. And this is a home decor paint as well. So I'm just making my pages this oatmeal color. Once I had that all done, I allowed it to dry, and then I came in with a green marker. A friend of mine gave this to me several years ago. I have no idea where it was purchased, but it's really a great marker. I've used um, other ones like it. I have a blue one that I used recently on one of my giant eggs, but I am just taking my time and hand lettering these um, little words onto my book spines and using different fonts just for each one. So I'm taking my time. Remember that this is sped up by about almost three times. So I have uh, 
this is not my handwriting. This is hand lettering, so it's more like drawing letters, if that helps to put it into perspective. But I've got Mother Nature Laughs, and I'm. it's going to say in flowers. Mother Nature Laughs in flowers, and I'm doing it backwards, you'll notice, because I want everything to be right justified. So I started at the right and worked my way towards the left. And for my O, I'm actually drawing a little flower here. So I've got my sunny porch, just using a fine paintbrush. And then I got an even smaller little paintbrush and I'm dabbing the center with my vintage Victorian, that light pink color again. And then I had realized afterwards that I forgot the in. So I went ahead and added in. And then once that was all dry, I grabbed out some um, ribbon that I had in my stash. And I thought this would be fun because it's a double-sided ribbon, clearly. <laughs> and I'm putting the green on the outside for the, um, the wrap, if you will. And one reason I wanted to wrap it this way is because I really did want it to have that illusion of being a stack of books. And I couldn't have that with the holes on the sides. So this ribbon served the purpose of not only making it look cute, but it's covering up those holes so you can't see them anymore. And so once I had that tied off and trimmed, I went ahead and grabbed the ribbon again, created a loop, and cut that off. And then I cut another length and I tied it around the middle. There, I'm cutting the length. I'm going to tie it around the middle to create my little bow. And once I have that all knotted, I'm just knotting it. And it's okay if it goes a little wonky on you when you first pull that tight. That is normal. You can just um, pause for a moment, straighten it out, and get it the way you want it. For the second knot, I went ahead and flipped it underneath. And then, so once I had it started, I flipped the one um, tie back underneath. So now when I pull it tight, my knot is underneath. Hopefully that makes sense. I do have a bow tutorial video where I go into more detail on how I do that so that the um, knot is hidden. And I will leave that in the description box in case that's of interest to you. Then I went ahead and trimmed off the little ends. I just got them dovetailed so they were nice and neat. And I thought this was so, so sweet, but I'm not done yet. So I grabbed a couple of more of those little flowers, the paper flowers, and I figured I would add those on here. I could have added some flowers to the top also. I honestly didn't think about it until just now, but you totally could add um, some flowers underneath that bow on the top as well. I just thought it'd be fun to use these paper flowers again. Let me know what you think. And here we are with the final reveal. Okay, everybody, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the project, I hope you'll give me a big thumbs up and leave me a comment because it really does help to support my channel and it helps my channel to grow. And just a reminder that this is part of a whole playlist with other crafters participating. So you'll wanna check that out and see all of the fantastic minis inspiration. There's a link in my description box for that. And until the next time, be well, be kind and make it a great day. Thank you again so much for watching. Take good care. Bye. Say bye, boo. Say bye bye. <laughs> Who's a good boy? Is Sammy a good boy? Hey. Who's a good boy? You look so handsome in your sweater. Yes, and he's a good girl too. You all handsome? You gonna say hi to everybody? You want to see your handsome face? Mm.
took a boy. Yes, I know. I know. What, you want to be on camera too? Oh. <laughs> Come up here, Sunny. Come up here. You want to say hi? Oh. <laughs> you want to say hi? <laughs> Who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? Oh, oh I know. Oh. <laughs> You're so pretty. Oh, I know. You say, you say hello, 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 hello. <laughs>